thank you so much it's a it's a very old topic and a very big topic uh, i don't know how will i justify this for the 6 mu- six minute talk but so i will go a little faster so i'm uh, so we are, as we all know that thoracolumbar lumbar region is a unique region in this spine and uniquely positioned between the rigid thoracic spine and the mobile lumbar spine and this transition at the thoracolumbar junction subjects it to a significant biomechanical stresses and making f- uh, mistake another point that makes this unique region is the u- neurological involvement due to injury to corners of the spinal cord and a myriads of combination of neurological involvement hence are possible with thoracolumbar fracture so if you see this x-ray this this is this is a x-ray of a girl uh, who was 18 years history of fall had this fracture she was neurologically intact but presented only with a bowel bla- bowel and bladder involvement so that is so uh, you know uh, unique to this thoracolumbar region you can patient can have only bowel bladder involvement and nothing else uh, but when we treat this question uh, these fractures there are multiple questions which come to our mind some of them are what classification should be used when we want to classify this how do i define instability whether cast bracing can be used to instable or unstable bus fracture what is the ideal time for the surgery what is the ideal time for decompression in neurological deficits if neurology is intact whether to operate or not which approach to use for surgical decompression of neural tissues is decompression indicated for complete spinal cord injury can i put medical screw in the fracture vertebra can i avoid anterior reconstruction by long segment posterior fixation in unstable thoracolumbar bus fractures and is methylprednisolone really useful so these are very important questions dilemmas that come across our mind and these these answers have been you know that this talk has been going on for years now and over all these years we have tried to you know uh, add brick by brick uh, to uh, to and uh, to make our understanding better over all, all these years so what classification to use so ideal classification should be comprehensive it should be usable it should be accurate predictable and it should guide intervention but unfortunately we are still seeking it uh, this is the history of uh, thoracolumbar uh, classifications starting from holdsworth white said dennis classification mckeffy classification low sharing classification i'm not going to details of it and the last one is uh, tillis classification which was given by dr bakaro now what we are doing is we are looking at ao tillix which is the newer one which is a new new uh, new pigeon in the cage and uh, i mean it it promises a lot of things but still uh, i think a lot of uh, work and uh, validation is required before we actually adopt it in our system uh differences uh, between ao and uh, dennis ao was based on uh, basically two column dennis was in three columns and there were some differences but the reproduci- uh, reproducibility of dennis was better than ao and thereby ao went into the th- this was the initial uh, ao and it went into uh, disrepute because of the poor reproduc- uh, reproducibility of ao classification uh and the later 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 came the tillis classification which seemed to be an acceptably reliable system when compared to the dennis and the ao system and there is a base level of knowledge and familiarity necessary for the application of system at reliable levels so the classification of thoracolumbar injury has evolved significantly over the course of last 75 years and most of these schemes were limited by their complexity relevance and poor reliability so the tillis classification which came uh, in uh, 2005 i suppose uh, the tillis classification system represents a evolution as as it combines several important factors and uh, but there were still some limitations to the tillis classification that it focused mainly on the uh, plc neurology and the uh, morphology of the fracture but additionally there is i mean neurological scoring can be impossible during spinal shock which was not, not taken into account additionally there is a need to determine uh, the indirect radiological parameters of unstable spine uh, tillis does not su- describe surgical stabilization in case of rotational damage and similarly bus fracture uh, you know you may have different points and you may actually land up doing a conservative treatment for uh, for uh, bus fractures uh, with tillis classification in spite of ki- ki- kyphotic angulation and uh, uh, bus but this thing neurological involvement should be not, should was not there this is a recent one which i was talking about the ao tillis which is uh, the but it is still not completely validated uh, the multi centric validation is still pa- pending and Uh, if we compare this classification to the tillis classification it includes all the components needed for decision making it it has good inter inter uh, inter observer reliability and it's most comprehensive classification as as of now at present so uh, let let's come to the second uh, how do i define instability 
why is it important to look for instability? Instability is the key to therapeutic indications because it equates in many cases with the need for internal stabilization, uh, first defined by Holdsworth. So PLC was, um, uh, rupture of PLC was made as, was not compatible with stable co uh, biomechanical studies showed that complete rupture of posterior longitudinal ligament or complex alone is not sufficient to establish instability. Additional rupture of the posterior li ligament is complex. Posterior handler's fibrosis permits instability in flexion. And this was white side magnal dense classification. Uh, a stable spine is one which can withstand axial forces. Telex took in the white, white and Punjabi definition of this thing. Whether cast bracing can be used? Yes, it can. A thoracolumbar burst fracture in exclusion of an ex associated Posterior ligamentous complex injury is inherently a very stable injury and may not require a brace. Uh, Non-operative management of thoracolumbar burst fractures with hyperextension casting or bracing was proven to be safe and effective. Uh, I think I don't think I can finish this, so I'll just go to the final uh, take-home message because it's a big topic. It's it's impossible to do a justification for this. I'll just answer the dilemmas and the and the crux of it. So the take home message from this talk is what classification to use as of now there is no system which completely predicts careful classification with, will guide optimal treatment of a particular fracture type. How do I define instability? A stable spine is one which can withstand axial forces anteriorly, tensile forces posteriorly and rotational forces so as to hold the body erect, protecting the contents of the canal and preventing progressive kyphosis. Injury to PLC is a main indicator of instability. Okay, so whether cast bracing can be used in stable, unstable burst fractures, hyperextension casting or bracing was proven to be safe and effective method for selected patients. What is the ideal time for surgery? Ideally, patients with unstable thoracolumbar fracture should undergo surgical stabilization of their injury to reduce morbidity and uh, possibly mortality as soon as the general condition is stable. What is the ideal time for decompression in neurological deficit? Evidence suggests that early decompressive surgery in selected patients may enhance neurological recovery. If neurology is intact, whether to operate or not. In thoracolumbar burst fractures, without a neurological deficit, there is no superiority of conservative therapy over operative therapy, except in polytrauma patients uh, in whom the surgery has better results. Which approach to use for surgical decompression for neural tissues? So if you go back in the history, anterior decompression has always uh, provided better strut grafting, fixation yields and good results in terms of neurological recovery. Is decompression indicated for complete spinal cord injury? Should we do decompression when we uh, deal with HIA injuries? So spinal canal stenosis is poorly correlated with neurological dysfunction in thoracolumbar burst fractures and surgical decompression is not vital to neurological recovery. So you can only do it in terms of if you are planning to you know, uh, avoid late development of post-traumatic syringomyelias. Can I put pedicle screw in fracture vertebra? Yes, reinforcement with fracture level screw combination helps to provide better kyphosis correction and biomechanical stability. Can I avoid anterior reconstruction by long segment posterior fixation in unstable thoracolumbar burst fractures? Lumbosacral instrumentation is a more effective management of thoracolumbar burst fracture.